It is time for another month of Tabletop TBR. This is the game that I play to pick out the books to be read during the month. It is April and it's gonna be a wild ride. So let's just jump right into it. I'll hold this just in case. Let's start off with our bonus card picks. So we have it's worth more, another it's worth more, plus two points for 500 or more pages, one bonus point for a mystery, one for a red cover, one for historical, one for a reread, one for a classic, one for a debut novel, and one general bonus point. All right, so I have all month to complete these. Then I think I'm just picking one of these at the top of the game. I don't know. So a move plus one space and let's get started. All right, so our first roll, we've got a three and a one, so four. I think I'm gonna use one of my re-roll that because I do wanna have higher numbers than this. So I'll put that at the bottom here, and we'll re-roll. Okay, much better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we start on that, we get a point just for passing and I started doing these so I get a plus three spaces that does mean that I can roll again so we can get a prompt all right a six one two three four five six another re-roll oh that's only three one two three that is a regular prompt so our first prompt a book with an animal companion or a pet. To be honest, I've been struggling a little bit with this prompt. I decided to go with Dungeon Critters, which is a graphic novel featuring several animal characters that are all going on adventures together. It sounds adorable, it sounds cute. I know I'm stretching it, but they are companions to each other and they are all animals. So it's also perfect. <laughs> Plus, since I was struggling a little bit last month with reading, I definitely appreciate some easier reads. All right, next roll. Our first double. All right, so we'll be doing 11 total. So that goes up one. So I think that means we have 10 more to go. Oh, I wasn't supposed to re-roll, but I did. So we're gonna keep that. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to re-roll. That was my bad. So I'm gonna use my, my tool here. I'm keeping the extra turn though. Uh, you don't have to if you're playing this on your own. If you use a re-roll that, you can do that to avoid getting extra rounds, but I don't because I read a lot. So it's okay to get extra rounds. Okay, so 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I'm gonna use a move one space so that I don't get demoted because I don't want to lose all that progress, especially since I used, <laughs> let's re-roll that accidentally. Okay, next prompt, a book from a new to me author. All right, I'm gonna use this one as a chance for me to read something that I've been wanting to read and that is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. I have not read anything from Olivia Atwater before. This is a fantasy historical Regency romance. Okay, so our main character was cursed by a fairy, which means that she has no sense of fear or embarrassment, which often leads to a scandal. And since we're in a historical Regency setting, that makes perfect sense. And it seems like while she's trying to lay low, somebody finds out the situation that she's in and uses it to their advantage. And it pulls her into a world of fairies and other things. I don't know. I'm excited for it. It sounds right up my alley because I love romance, historical, and fantasy, and it's a little bit of all of that. So uh, yes, please. Next roll. Okay, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that, <laughs> that means I pick two prompts for this one go. So a TBR jar pick, woohoo. Okay, TBR jar time. All right, so there is a selection of books in here. I have books that I already own. I have sequels that I need to read. I have books I don't own. I have books I'm excited about. I have books that I'm not super excited about. So let's see what we get. <laughs> Last month, I got to buy two new books thanks to the TBR jar, so not gonna lie, kind of hoping that happens again. Here is our winner. Oh, 
another new book. So Island Queen by Vanessa Riley. Nice. I get to buy a new book and as far as I'm aware I know it's historical. I think it's historical romance featuring a black main character but I'm not 100% sure so I guess stay tuned for the monthly wrap-up to see what the book actually is about. But I'm excited. I've liked stuff from this author before and hopefully this will be another one that I end up enjoying. Okay, and then next up, a book out of your comfort zone. Ooh, all right. Okay, so for out of my comfort zone, I'm not 100% sure the best direction that I want to go with this, but I decided since I do want to read more classics, but in general, that's not necessarily my vibe, I figured that would work. I recently got A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf, and I'm interested to see how I feel about it. If it's my jam, if I'm into it, it's not nice and short so I think that's a, a good classic to work with and it's written by a woman so that's also nice. So in this it says Virginia Woolf imagines that Shakespeare had a sister equal to Shakespeare in talent and equal in genius but whose legacy is radically different. This imaginary woman never writes a word and dies by her own hand, her genius unexpressed. If only she found the means to create, argues Wolf, she would have reached the same height as her immortal sibling. Um, so it is a classic essay on that topic, which I am interested in checking out. And the message is women must have a steady income and a room of their own in order to have the freedom to create. Oh, that's cute. I'm excited. So like not only is it a classic out of my comfort zone, but it's also an essay out of my comfort zone. So two for two on that one. Next roll five. That is lower than I want, but I don't have a lot of these. So I'm just going to keep it moving. One, two, three, four, five. Oh only I'd gotten a six I could have jumped fine regular prompt highest rated on Goodreads I did have to skip things that were like parts of series that I haven't started or books that I didn't own etc etc but I did come across one that I am pretty excited about and that is as long as lemon tree grows and this as far as I'm aware is going to be a tearjerker type story. It's literary fiction I believe and it says it's burning with the fires of hope and possibility. This debut is a breathtaking story of love and loss set amid the Syrian revolution. So yeah it's gonna be a heavy hitter but I've heard really good things about it so I am excited to give it a shot. Next roll. Ooh, I thought that was going to be a double. Okay, a four. We're getting low rolls now. One, two, three, four. A bestseller. So for this one, I'm going with Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmas. And I actually learned about this through the, I guess it's an Apple TV show. And it looked really good. I watched, I guess, I don't know if it was just the first episode or the first two episodes or something like that. And I was really into it and was like, oh, I want to read the book first before I continue and, you know, do a like comparison thing. Hopefully I will also get around to watching the TV show once I finish this because I'm, I enjoyed it so far and I want to see. I love comparing movies and TV shows to the book but I usually prefer reading the book first beforehand. So I think this is like a woman in the 50s who is a chemist and obviously there are limitations to being a chemist at that time but she also really likes cooking and I guess she gets like a TV show situation offered to her because she's really good at that and I think there's like romance elements involved in it and it's just her trying to do the things that she loves and having this TV show kind of be the only way that she can do that since the actual scientific industry is not very accepting of her as a woman in the time. So I'm very interested in seeing how the book goes and then the show. All right that means what we have six more to go. Ooh, okay nine one two three four five six seven eight nine we jump ahead thank you tbr gods all right that's a regular prompt shortest book on my tbr nice okay so for this one i'm actually going with a little collection of poetry war of the foxes by richard Sykin. and the whole thing is only like 47 pages so this should be a pretty quick read 
I do really like poetry but I don't really get around to reading it very much so I am excited to give this a shot. It was a recommendation from an author that I really enjoy so I do hope that I like it because this is also out of my comfort zone. I know this isn't the comfort zone prompt but it fits. <laughs> Uh, since I don't know much about the author or the poetry style, but hopefully it's my jam. Next up. Oh, another double. <laughs> okay, all right. So that's 10. This goes up again. That's fine. We will be getting another board point. Plus I get to pull. Actually, let's do that first. Hopefully I can get in a, a no. I was looking for a re-roll that, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Regular prompt. We're good, we're good, we're good. Ooh, okay, most recently acquired. Okay, so most recently acquired, of course, is a book subscription box, and that is Bride by Hall Allie Hazelwood, which is her would be like debut fantasy since she's just really done like contemporary romance and now this is fantasy romance. And as far as I'm aware, our main character is a vampire and the love interest is a werewolf. And that's all I know and all that I want to know going into it. <laughs> Is they say keep your friends close and your enemies closer. They don't know what they're talking about. A vampire bride and an alpha werewolf form a dangerous alliance in this enthralling new paranormal romance. So I'm excited to give it a shot. Check it out. All right, next roll. Okay, another seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Regular prompt. A book with a lot of hype. This is the perfect opportunity for me to get ahead on the next Patreon Bessie's Book Club pick, which is What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. And this is technically going to be our May-June selection, but since the book club is still pretty small, we aren't doing live shows yet, so I will just be doing a spoiler reading vlog for it, and I am trying to get ahead on that. So the vlog won't go out for a while, but I do hope to get ahead of that. There's a good chance, though, since I still have a lot of catching up to do for other books that I might not get around to this this month. Like, if I'm being honest with you. But we'll see. It would be nice if I can get ahead on it, which is why I picked it. And also, I've seen a lot of people talk about this. It is the first in a duology, and I have no clue when the second book is going to come out. So there is part of me that wishes that I waited until the second book was available so that I could just read them back to back. But at last, the patrons voted. So this is what we're going with. Next roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. A book featuring a female protagonist. Okay, female protagonist. Now, this was a TBR jar pick in the past that I never got around to. And I think for TBR jar picks, because they're like super random, I get bonus points for finishing them that month, but I only get one extra point if I finish it in the future. And that will be on top of this new prompt point. Um, so that will be The Bone Witch by Rin Chupeco. This is a witchy trilogy that I have really been wanting to read. But the problem is I want to kind of like binge read the entire series. So like this month may not be the best month since there's so much going on already. And you know, like we just started. <laughs> But if all works out, I do want to try and read this ASAP and see if it is all that I'm hoping it to be because I love you some witchy vibes and fun fantasy stories. So in this one, our main character is not like the other witches in her family. She's a necromancer or a bone witch who are often feared and ostracized in this particular kingdom. But she is very strong because of this and she ends up leaving her homeland to a train with a older wiser bone witch. But I believe like while all of this happens, war or whatever among all of the kingdoms comes to threaten her homeland and she's all like, I need to save my people. And so it says a lyrical action packed story that will leave you breathless. So please let this be the month. <laughs> Pray for me guys. 
We need to get to this. I'm so excited for it. I need to just find the time. And this is, this is the month that we're gonna find the time. Next roll. Six, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. <sighs> Keep missing that jump by a hair. Regular prompt, okay. A book with an ugly cover. Hear me out. This cover isn't ugly. It's not ugly. The illustration is great. It's all fine and dandy. I'm just not a fan personally of this art style. I appreciate it. It does some cool things, but the the actual style itself is just not my jam. So I'm not a big fan of the covers that I have from this artist, which I feel really bad because I think she does some cool stuff. It's just it's just not for me. And so I'm going with the Vermilion Emporium by Jamie Patton, I believe. And this is a Fox and Wit redesign cover. And it's again, there's nothing wrong with the actual design. Like it is a nice cover. <laughs> like I just, it's not my favorite art style. And I feel so bad saying that, but like, it's true. I don't, I don't love this art. Okay, so we have two characters. One of them who discovers a strand of starlight on the cliffs outside of this like town and notices that a mysterious curiosity shop appears around the same time. So it's possible that they're connected. And around the same time, a, another character who's the ordinary daughter of an extraordinary circus performer chases rumor of the shop. She's trying to go to the shop so that she can uphold her mother's legacy and, you know, find her future or whatever. And they end up running into each other at the same time and discover a book that teaches you how to weave starlight into lace with the starlight that the other boy found. They end up kind of working together and the lace that they create catches the eye of the ruler of this whole like kingdom area, but they have to go on a little adventure to get the, the last remaining item or something like that. And so a cute little, I think it's a romance fantasy. And I'm interested in finally getting around to reading this because I have had it for years and I am trying to tackle my subscription box books because they're just piling up. <laughs> and I need to see how I feel about them, you know? Two more to go. Next roll. Three. Oh, that's so low. Okay. One, two, three. Ah, okay. I see what you did there, TBR game. Okay, much better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> what I get. A double double prompt. Man. Okay. All right. Love this for me. A part of a series. Thank you. As I mentioned last month, I struggled a little bit with reading. I did not do as much reading as I normally do. And so I was originally planning on reading this then and it didn't pan out. So now it's our opportunity to uh, finish a Crown So Cursed by L.L. McKinney, which is the third and final book in the trilogy. It is a Alice in Wonderland modern retelling where our main character kind of gets pulled into this world where they fight these nightmares that come from Wonderland. And lots of different things happen. I have been enjoying it. The second book did have some like YA bits that I wasn't super excited about. And I'm sure the first book did as well. Although I don't remember entirely, like it's been a while. I do just remember enjoying it. But there's a switch that happens in book two that I really appreciate and has made the rest of book two and book three a lot more enjoyable to consume because it's one of those like YA tropes that I'm not a big fan of, which is unfair because it's like, it makes sense for a YA, because people, like, the characters are young, but I just want the adventure and the fun stuff without all of the annoying YA problems. <laughs> Still at me, but I am enjoying it so far and I would love to finally finish the story, so. All right, the next one. A book with an animal on the cover, okay. <laughs> Okay, another animal on the cover, but this time it doesn't have to be a companion. I'm gonna go with The Only Good Indians. I remember when this first came out, I saw it literally everywhere. And I've been really excited and interested in seeing if I would enjoy it. I have 
enjoyed other books by Stephen Graham Jones and so I feel like this could be right up my alley but I know it's not everybody's cup of tea so I don't know we'll have to wait and see find out how I feel I do want to go in this pretty line so all I'll say is that this is a horror novel and it says that it is full of humor and bone chilling images hopefully I find it spooky in all the right ways okay possibly our last roll let's see all right it is all right six one two three four five six oh wait <laughs> I guess we still have a chance of it not. Okay, so that's three points total and another one of these. We're getting a lot of these move spaces. Maybe I should use that. Um, okay, so we roll again so we can find a prop. <laughs> I knew I spoke too soon. Okay, so we got a double, which means that this goes up. <laughs> um, okay, and it's gonna be, okay, one, two. And then I want to use something. I have two of these move three spaces. I don't want this. So I'll do the three spaces. So one, two, three. That's a regular prompt. I can get rid of that. Oh, maybe we should also to set me up real sweet. Oh wait, no, because I have to play one more role. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. So we'll do this. Oh nice, a gifted book. I actually have one remaining so we can do this. All right, I am so glad that I'm able to actually use this prompt. I'm gonna have to take it out of the rotation because this is the only one that I have on hand that I haven't read that isn't set for something else. And that is Children of Blood and Bone. I actually ended up getting this as I think like a birthday gift several years ago from my family. But technically I had gotten the Kindle version. And so I haven't really prioritized reading it until I recently got the sprayed edges editions of the paperback. This one is about a character whose world used to be filled with magic but that is no longer the case so for the most part they removed magic partially she has a chance to bring it back and now she's fighting against the crown prince who's all like no 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 magic ever not a chance and so we've got a epic fantasy of her trying to change and fix things and bring back the wonders of magic in her world again totally up my alley an african inspired fantasy book with witchy vibes that i'm totally here for all right possibly our last roll <laughs> Okay, 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 that's just the three. One, two, oh, that sucks, uh, three. Okay, a mixed media book. Do I have this? Let's find out. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is probably a terrible idea, especially because like, look at this, look at this. What is wrong with me? Um, But I've been meaning to read this for a really long time and I technically already have two other prompts, one of which is this prompt. I took it out so that I can use it again. <laughs> and then now I'm just gonna double it up on the same book. I know, I'm cheating in all kinds of ways, but it's whatever. I'm gonna see if we can finally finish House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. Probably butchered that. But yeah, this is a chonker. It's an experience. I'm a little less than a halfway through. I feel like it's just gotten to some good parts. So now's the time. I just need to do it. <laughs> it is a mixed media horror story. This is like story inception. So we have one character who has found a essay written by another character about a indie underground movie recording of this haunted house experience. And so there's all of these different layers that we're getting to uncover what happened in this house where basically this film director bought a house that has some quirks that makes no sense. Like for instance, when he measures the inside, it is larger than the exterior measurements. And then a door appears on the outside wall of his house, but when he opens it, it doesn't just go into his backyard like you would expect. Instead, there's a very long hallway that's impossible to be there. 
And so there becomes this explore, this desire to explore and it gets like spooky and weird and all kinds of stuff happens. And some people say it's like the scariest thing that they've ever read. I will say so far, I have not felt that the first half of the book. But like I said, things are starting to pick up at the part where I left off a couple of years ago. <laughs> And I've just been waiting for the time to, you know, hunker down, sit down and, and complete it. And hopefully now is the time. That is a little bit ambitious because I do have several other books that I will also be reading this month. So first off, I'll be reading Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murders as I am a guest host for Books and Lala's Literally Dead Book Club, which I believe we're having a live show for on Sunday, April 7th. I'll also be reading Brooklyn by Tracy Brown for a separate little book club that I am a part of. And then for the POC book club, I'll be reading The Forest Demands Its Due by Kasoko Jackson, which we will have a live show discussion probably, you know, the second week of April. So if you haven't started it yet, you have a little bit of time. And then lastly, I will also be reading So Let Them Burn by Camilla Cole for Jan's moon themed book club, which we will be doing a live show discussion on the full moon. So that's pretty exciting. And I'm pretty excited about this. So lots going on. I do also have my bonus points that I will hopefully be able to apply to some of these along with whatever else I end up reading throughout the month. I do really hope you enjoyed the chaos of another TBR game. If you are interested in playing around, I do have the print in play available for download in the description box. I do also have links to all of the books if you would like to get them. Thank you so much for being awesome and I will catch you in the next video. Until then, Bye!